<laughs> we're keeping it. We're, we're fucking keeping, keeping it. Yeah, it. We're keeping we're it. Keeping it. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to episode one of Star Nerds, yeah. featuring your host Jacob the Eggnog Jakester <laughs> and Cosmonate the Jedi. What the fuck? <laughs> so this is gonna be a little string of episodes on Cup of Eggnog, and if he wants, I don't fucking send it to you. I don't care. Um, this is your first time recording with me. Do you like the casting couch? It's nice and comfy. We couldn't find a leather one. It's my fucking couch, by the way. <laughs> We're at my house. You didn't have to say that. We're definitely not in Belleville. I'm not going to say the address because I'm not going to dox you. Yeah, don't, le- don't definitely live on... 1234 Sesame Street. Oh, I was going to say the address and then tell you to bleep it. No, I'm not going to. I don't edit shit on these. But... Okay, so yeah. Um, so the discussion today... Uh, it's going to be two discussions because the first one's going to end very quickly and we already know the answer to it. But we're going to be discussing the Star Wars trilogies and which one is the best and which one is the worst. I'm going to say the best one on three. The best one is on three, one, two, three. Original trilogy. Okay, that's out of the way. Now we got to talk about the worst one. <laughs> now, the common debate uh, as of late, because people have forgotten how movies are supposed to be made, yeah. uh, is that the sequels are the worst. And before the sequels ever existed, the prequels were the worst. Yeah, it's literally just dogging. Oh, yeah, it's not my Star Wars. It's not my Star Wars, I grew up. No, no, they're going to have lightsaber. What the fuck is this? I don't like female hey, Luke. Hey, I don't like this. No, um, but yeah. It, so, yeah, we're going with, so we're going to talk about, so uh, we'll, we'll touch on both of them, and then at the I'll end. We'll touch on all of them, yeah. Oh, shut up. <laughs> we're we're going to touch on both of them, and we'll, we'll conclude at the end which one we believe each is the each worst. Other. We'll, we'll have independent opinions on this, of course. He's probably going to disagree with me. I don't yeah, know. No, I might have a different we, perspective. We, we, we move around a lot on this subject. We'll find out. But we, we tend to not disagree too much about this subject. He, we just have preferences based on childhood experience, although <laughs> mine's not based on childhood experience. Mine is. I'm not biased anymore, so. Well, When you, I was a kid, though, I was. You want to start in chronological order and say prequels? Oh, yeah, chronological. So we're going to start with the prequels. All right, so. I just mean, like, release date. is like, eh, 20 years ago. Here we go. Yeah, of course. well, right. I mean, chronologically, it's already in that. Yeah. So we'll start with the, the, the prequels, um, starting with episode one. Um, oh, fucking God. That movie, for its time, the CGI was amazing. We're not going to talk about Jar Jar for a minute. Jar Jar, actually, you know what? He I, was the very first CGI character, so I, props I, for the science. I actually like Jar Jar. I have no problem with him. I'm saying, like, for people who fucking hate him. Okay, yeah. If you're not like a Jar Jar Binks, you're going to fuck Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Jar Jar Binks. I can't do Jar Jar. Um, yeah, if you hate Jar Jar, I don't care. Uh, Jar Jar is one of the only parts of that movie that isn't boring. Well, sorry if I keep... If you hear... I'm just double checking to make sure the recording's there. Um... One of the weird things about that is, from like a movie standpoint, like a design standpoint, like if you look at all that shit, God tier CGI for the '90s. Yes. Star Wars was the front runner, and then the Matrix was like, "It's for me." Uh, I I feel bad. For he me. did the uwu hands. If you're wondering, I'm gonna go kill myself now. No, with, I'm gonna not go my fall house. On that sword. Uh, I'll do it in the parking lot. Does that count? Kinda. <laughs> Well, okay, so here's the thing. Um, I like so I'll, I'll say what I like about the first movie, we'll the the first the chronological shit. movie, not release date chronologically. So um, the things I like about episode one, um, I love Qui Gon, although the, we'll touch on the negatives of that as Qui-Gon well. Qui Gon is daddy. Qui Gon is cool. Um, uh. The world building is really good. I think Naboo and Tatooine were built really well. Although we already technically had a Tatooine, they kind of expanded on it from Episode Four. I can yeah. I can definitely say the world building. I think I think Lucas in every movie that he's ever been a part of, even the ones he wasn't a part of, the world building has always been amazing in Star Wars movies. We already know this. Yeah. And in Episode One, of course, it already shows. You know, you, you have a couple different settings. You got Naboo. You got Tatooine. Even the ship was pretty entertaining for a short time. That it was you know for the time it was around. The Falcon. Oh no! Shit. The, the the big Death Star, but with Saturn rings. Oh, you're talking about the uh, Trade Federation yes. blockade. Which became the Separatists. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I like those parts. Um, the ending fight, everyone knows the Darth Maul oh, fight. Yes, dueling now, fights. Now, I have, a, I'm a huge, I have a huge problem with Episode three's fight, but yeah. I don't have a problem with Episode one's. I don't think it draws out for that long. Um... Qui-Gon dying makes a lot of sense. 
And honestly, if Qui Gon hadn't died, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have gone the way that it gone with Anakin. I think. I think everybody believes that. If you watch Star Wars Theory, you could probably believe that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Episode One has a few things I do like about it. Um, CGI is really good. Jacob is right about this. Um, I'm trying no. to think, is there anything else I can think of? Um, pod racing. Pod racing's cool. It's a cool pod concept. Pod racing was fucking amazing. It's like swoop bikes in, in KOTOR. Yeah. Um, there is a couple things that I, did, that I forgot to mention was the fact that Anakin's mother actually tried to give him a good life. Shmi is actually a really good character. I, out of all the acting in that movie, I think Shmi, Qui-Gon have like the best acting in the whole movie. Yeah, this movie got dogged a lot for the whole, oh, it's, uh, they're trying to retcon shit and all that, and the fact that Jar Jar existed at the time, people fucking hated him for the idea. And that's another, the, uh, I forgot to bring that up. I think Jar Jar, um, for how... Bo- he the gets more... too much shit. Yeah, exactly. I think, um, I think episode one is very boring for like 90% of it. And I think Jar Jar Binks adds like little bits to keep you awake during the movie for sure for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I used to hate him as a kid. I didn't even hate him as a kid. I thought he was okay. And then when I got older, I was like, you know what? It's giving me something to look at that's kind of funny-ish. Like he's, he's stupid funny. He's so stupid that he's funny. Yeah. I never really had a problem with him. He's it. like the Sharknado characters. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, those movies I have a problem with. But Jar Jar, I have no problem with. Like I had no problem with him when I was a kid. My parents, when they went and saw it like eight times to get the Jar Jar Binks <laughs> cup, didn't have a problem with it. That thing, did you know that existed? Hmm? In theaters when Phantom Menace released, they had these cups of molded Jar Jar Binks going like this with his arms up to the side going, Whoa. Oh, we don't have any more. We had the dancing Jar Jar toy. Oh my god. But all he did was this. So he, ba- he like basically that. just did the twist. He just... Um, he had a seizure on the... It looked like those. Mr. Heaven has talked. Um... And also, here are a fun little tidbit um, in the house that we're currently in, which is mine. Uh, my dad still has them. Uh, we have the episode one, like, they're these, like, podium box looking uh, toys with, yeah, statuettes that actually move when you press a the button, they'll fight each other. What? You can attach them, but there's no batteries and they don't really work anymore because they're old as hell. And Darth Maul is missing a part of his lightsaber. But we have Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, and Darth Maul. They moved? Yes. They, you would so you'd stack them together. They have cl- pieces that click in, and then they would just go. Tr- okay, they tr- would swing. All right, cool. yeah, which is still pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so episode one, those are the those are good things. Now we gotta delve into the problems. Sorry, I'm just I'm stuck. I I want to like reminisce about young Obi Wan and how hot he was. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so actually, that will be our first point. Uh, Obi Wan sucks in episode one. He got nothing. He's he, Obi Wan got nerfed. <laughs> yeah, he got re- in the first movie. He's very. He doesn't do anything. Although he's just a pattern one, so I could see why they didn't want him in the spotlight. Um, I'm not gonna dog on. He it. didn't do anything until the last fight. Yes, obviously. But that's the problem. You don't get to see the relationship between. Yeah, this is where Qui Gon comes in again. Qui Gon got the most character development in a movie that he's like the only movie he's a part of for some reason. And the problem is that you don't get to see the relationship between them build very much. You just see, like, tiny little, like, they glance at each other once in a while. That's pretty much and all that happens. negotiations were short. Like, little jokes yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, little, but you don't, you don't see them have any bonding moments where you're like, oh, yeah, these two. Like, you need books and shit to show you how good they actually were to each other. And the fact that Qui-Gon's backstory is legitimately tragic, and that's why he was shaken. As from... well as Obi-Wan's. Obi-Wan has... Obi-Wan is, too. Yeah, he, he was a weak... Per... They thought him as weak, and then qui the only... They didn't get him. Yeah, and then Qui-Gon, like, eventually was like, oh, you know what? He can actually be pretty good. He was a replacement apprentice for the failure that Qui-Gon had, and the fact that Qui-Gon was shaken in his belief in the Jedi Order, he was like... If a gray Jedi could actually exist in the movies before Ahsoka Tano got put... Don't you give me that look. I hate, I hate the idea of gray Jedis. They're not real. You can't be in the middle. If you're in the middle, you're not a Jedi or a Sith. You're just a moderate. You're just, you're just gray. You're the, it's not a gray Jedi, okay? That didn't, I mean, okay. Jedi it's is weird the because, wrong word for it. It's, it's weird because in Old Republic, the Sith it's were not... It's non-binary. In, in, the, in, the, in the KOTOR games, um, Sith are not Sith. They're actually just called Dark Jedi. So in, yeah. that, in the Old Republic, I guess you could get away with it, but now you can't really. Because then you just, you're a citizen. I, <laughs> you can't call it Fallen. It's not Maybe really... a force warrior or something? Force wielder? You could, yeah, you could go with force wielder. Like someone who just goes by the... Like, the like goes with the flow and the, the will, will of the, the force. Because yeah. the Jedi... The problem with the Jedi and the, the prequels... Now, this was intentional. They, we already know this. Yeah, they they, were, be, they were really bad at being Jedi. They were robotic, in a sense. Yeah, they weren't... They weren't... Uh, th- now, this isn't This isn't a flaw of the movies. This is how it's supposed to be. The, the Jedis were were ignorant and stubborn in their yep. ways they weren't open and that's where you know luke comes in later on and he discovers this and he and he sees where he's 
he's at with that. But we'll get to that when we talk about the the sequels. But yeah, yeah um, that was the problem with Jedi back then. Uh, but, to, back, but circle back to Qui Gon. Qui Gon Obi Wan did not have a good representation in the first movie. Yeah. So when not. Qui Gon dies, like you're sad because you know this the like, character. Oh, there goes Liam Neeson. Shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like Qui Gon dies, and it's sad because we got to know Qui Gon. But when Obi Wan's upset, it's like it doesn't really. It's 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 kind of sad, but like only, only if you have the true context of the relationship outside yeah. of the movie. The only idea that I get every time I see Obi Wan go no when Qui Gon dies is no no it, it's not like a whole status thing. It's you're done fucked up now, red boy, like something like that. That's all I think about when I see Obi Wan yeah. get pissed. Is uh oh, he gonna get a little angry for a minute? Shit's about to get real. I just want to address this too. Um, people get really mad uh, at the whole Ray Kylo Ren thing. Just remember that a Padawan beat a Sith assassin. To be fair, Darth Maul was, is a technically a Padawan too. They're on the same level. Not really, because like Were he they? was kind of kidnapped at like almost birth and trained by not not. Maul see, actually wasn't. Obi Wan was trained by Qui Gon, and Maul was trained by the greatest Sith to be known for the longest time. So good that he was able to hide himself from all the Jedi. And be around them in a political situation without even being sensed. Yeah. So I think I think Darth Maul would have been on a higher playing field than him. Maybe um, in force abilities, but the no, in in fighting for sure, because um, he's also more. So he uses uh, stance seven. Oh, he beat him in a sword fight. Kinda. Uh, well, he... And then he got surprised. Well, yeah. that that you know, I guess you're right, because he got he got fucking cocky and then. All right, never mind. I redact my point a little bit there. I can see why Obi Wan won, but still. Uh, yeah, that's where you see the young brashness of Maul, and then when he gets older, he gets better at that it's, stuff. Yeah, you can see him, but the only time that he fucks up is when he goes to fight Obi-Wan when he's about to die. Yep. In Rebels, which we'll talk about way later! Um, yeah, we, we don't have to talk about it in this podcast. We're, we're not going to. We, but we can talk about Rebels later on and how it's a bad Maul show. Maul could be his own episode with the amount of shit that we could talk about. Yeah, we could talk about how, about, how Rebels amazing. is a terrible show without Maul and Ahsoka and Vader. Yeah, you're not Sorry, Kanan Jarrus and Ezra Miller are just not that great to me. Just, it's fine. We'll talk outside about that. Outside other, of the show, that's they're pretty episode. cool. But yeah, uh, let's move on to the the actual second episode. The shit I don't show like the sand. I don't like sand. <laughs> it's hard and coarse, and the movie's boring. It gets everywhere. You think the first movie's boring, but I would rather watch the first movie a hundred times than watch the second one ever again. And here is the problem. The only issue I had with episode two was Only. the way, yes, because Anakin and Padme were the main things that kind of like threw me off. Because oh, wait, no, wait, 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 we gotta, we gotta, before we get into the problems, we gotta do what we did with episode one. We gotta go over the good things and then the bad things. Fair enough. So good things. Count Dooku. Obviously, although there's people like Cosmo on Variety Hour will tell you that Count Dooku sucks, but when you're like us and you have the outside context from the Clone Wars and the books and where he was before, when there's you can no see he's a good. Which yeah, which is what happened back in 2002, because yeah, there wasn't any outside books. When you when you don't have the context of anything else and only the movies, Count Dooku sucks. Yeah, he's really bad. But we're gonna go based on the context we have, even because they had legends back then before yes. it became legends, of course. We know, how, so we know who he is, and the reason why Dooku's hill is curved, and why his character's like this, and find out he's an actual count. exactly. And now, if uh, we're gonna we're gonna say he's in the good, just because we do have the context of him being a cool guy, so we'll stick with that. I think put him more towards you. I talk about her than you do. I love her. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, that's uh. That's, um, yeah, Dooku with context is really cool. Without it, he's stupid. But we're going to go with everything that we have context for. Yeah, we're basing off our knowledge and piecing apart everything, so we're trying to take up as much, even if it's Legends now. Yeah, we still love Legends. Yeah. KOTOR is all in our hearts. I haven't actually played KOTOR. you got to play KOTOR. I know. Kor KOTOR? KOTOR? KOTOR. KOTOR! 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 Spaceship! No, KOTOR! Um, Sorry, I don't know. That's what not, the fuck? That's not Star Wars. Uh, it's, it's kind of, no, um... So yeah, okay. So good things, good things. We got Count Dooku. We got Yoda. Yoda. I'm sorry, but Yoda going like a fucking Beyblade to me is funny. Now see, there's problem with that. <laughs> the Force powers of him going much to learn. You still have and sucking up the lightning. I'll actually... get into the, I'll get into you, what my problems with Yoda <laughs> later okay. on. But I do I do think it's pretty cool that you get to actually see him use a lightsaber. But I'll get into why I also hate it as well. Because in he's a, this like, old fucking thing. It's like, not that, but really? what, I pro oh, you'll see. You'll see what I mean. Um, so yeah, Dooku, uh, Yoda to some extent. Um, 
We I don't. I don't want to. We wanna don't s- have to agree on it. That's the thing. No, I do want to say I, I hated it at first, but now when I see it, I kind of get it. Um, the relationship between Obi Wan and Anakin. When when you first look at it, you think you looks you like think he's it's just being a dick to Anakin. Exactly, but the, where you see it, you start to realize the, re, the it's actually done on purpose. Anakin needs that shit because he's already. It's not even that. Fuck. It's actually the fact that Obi Wan's still young and brash himself. He's only a knight at that time. He's not yeah. a master yet. So. The problem is he's trying to compete with Anakin on some level because he knows the raw power of Anakin and Obi-Wan has not reached that master level yet. Because this is before he like masters Sorosu and all that crap. This is like yeah. right when he's getting really good at doing things. Yeah, it's literally just six months before the Clone Wars. Exactly. It's it's basically just a time where he's he's still he's he's all like Anakin. Like he's like Anakin in a sense, and when he's trying to train Anakin at such a young age compared to a lot of other people that train their own pattern ones. It's just slightly stressful with the it, fact that exactly. Anakin's it's, kind of a bitch sometimes. And yeah, it's it's this competing kind of thing going on. And that's the pro that, that that's where you start to see the faults of Obi Wan as a teacher, because he doesn't start getting good at it until later on when it's already too late and he's already in, when when Anakin's a knight himself. And Obi-Wan's just not a good teacher first because he doesn't know what he's doing and now he has to teach the cho- chosen one, so. That's that's probably the one thing about it is the fact that I can agree that he, the stress on him was probably a little bit unsurmountable. But when you look at the fact how Anakin acts is, I know I'm stronger than him. You know, and he tells me, he's like, I'm a better fighter than Yoda. And he goes, y- you wish, fucker. And there's like, like that kind of stuff. I mean, he stuff. had more potential than Yoda probably, but the problem is he doesn't have the attitude to, to bat. So in a fight... He well, Anakin talk. might have a lot of raw power that could kill Yoda. Yoda would be smarter. Yoda knows how to use so many fucking abilities over his 900 years. It's it's just a, a shit ton, but... Um, but yeah, that's that's something I do like. I do like that they show that Obi-Wan is, is not a perfect teacher. I like that they show this weakness in Obi-Wan, yeah. and now he's also young and brash, just like Anakin is, where he makes dumb decisions, like jumping out of a window to catch a tiny robot that tried to kill a senator. You know, I think it's funny that he basically goes, we must be cautious about this, and then not six hours later, yeet, out of the fucking window. And people have a problem with this, and... And here's the thing. It's hypocrisy. That's... It's it's supposed to show that that's another fault that he has. He is a really bad teacher. That that was done on purpose. I think it was. Because there's so many instances of, instances of him being a bad teacher. I think Lucas <laughs> yeah. actually does it on purpose. Yeah, like Genosa. Go look at that shit. About Genosa, the whole be yeah, cautious he... about everything and then he gets caught 30 minutes later. Yeah, exactly. He's just bad at being... He's, he's bad at what he's doing. Do but, as I say, not as I do. But it makes when you see him in episode three be a master in, oh in Clone Wars. It makes God. it it makes it better because you see like he grows too. It's yeah. not just Anakin who grows as a character; they both are growing together. They're both growing up. But yeah, uh, that that's something I like. Um, I do like the final battle with the Jedi's, the Jedi's. Before and the we droids. get to that, Jango Fett. Where He's do okay. we st- where do we stand on that? Because He's okay. He, it's a weird topic because now he's we... about on par with Boba Fett for me. They're both okay. Like they could be a lot better, but Boba Fett has the benefit of the Mandalorian. He got to come back and be cool. Oh my god, you saw that? Uh, I saw those scenes. I haven't watched the Mandalorian like that Jeez. much, but I did see the parts where he came. His theme is so fucking schnasty. <laughs> schnasty. Yeah, schnasty with an sh in front of that shit. But yeah, uh, Jango's Jango's fine. Um, I'm just simple man. I don't. I don't like the Jedi Council for, like, all the prequels, mm. to be honest. I don't think they really act like Jedi Masters. Now, the best part about that entire movie obviously has to be Coleman Trevor. Coleman Trevor. Oh, yeah, when he's, <laughs> like, he tries to kill Dooku and then he gets shot and dies in a second. <laughs> yes. Oh, greatest Jedi Master. There's a reason time. why his lightsaber was Jeez, green. Man, even the librarian's blue. better than he is. J- Jocasta knew? Yeah. She was the worst lights- lightsaber skills. Yeah, but... Character-wise, definitely went better. If, it, if it's not in a record, it doesn't exist. Well, fuck off, posh bitch! No, I'm talking about the book. The Vader book. Oh, you're talking about her with the, the lightsaber shotgun. Not even that, just the standoff she has with Vader and just not giving a fuck. She's like, I don't care if I die. I know who you are, Skywalker. But You'll that, never get that's them. That's why I like Jocasta, just because of that. I, she, I love the Vader book. She it's called great. him on his shit so fast. Yeah, she, doesn't, she did not give a shit at the end, because she already knew she was going to die. Yeah. But yeah, so the, that's, but that's cool. That's again, that's um, out of context. I shit. think I, I don't think the Dooku Obi Wan Anakin fight's very good. It's not shot very well. It's a cool fight, but it's not shot. It's because they wanted to keep as much Christopher Lee in it as possible, and not the latex head one. Exactly, and that's where it, that's where it falls short. Like I'm sure that if if the if they had better CGI, they probably could pull that off much better. 
but the the fight is shot so bad, so it's it's not, <laughs> it's not that good. The other thing you want to look at is the lore aspect of it. Is you are literally putting two people against each other, or two, not against each other, against the greatest swordsmen of their generation, who left their order and said, "Fuck you guys." Like second to the Jedi, Ma- Mace. Vampad. Mace is not well. Yeah, the pod is different, but the other thing was Dooku for his generation. He was the best one. He was the best swordsman. Not counting Yoda, because Yoda's his own yeah, fucking but... eh. category. He was considered the best duelist. If you go look at Legends, in for like Dooku's graduation. That year is and all true. That. Yes, he he was one of the greatest duelists of all time. Problem was he was only Makashi is a very limited form. Yeah, but it's literally just fencing. Tap your ass, like, and that's where Taro goes and fucks him up. I know he was holding back, quote unquote, in the in the movie, but like, yeah, he wasn't realistically. To kill them. I think Ataru would have still fucked him up because Makashi doesn't hold well to power strikes at all. It's supposed to be very slick. It's it's fencing. You have to be good on your feet to get out of the way of, of a style four. Pr- yeah, pretty much. You got to be really good at dodging and getting out of the way of that because Makashi doesn't take well. You've seen. When he fights, um, the reason why he fights with the curve belt, we know it's so he can move a lot faster with it, but that it doesn't give him the leverage and power he needs to block strikes like Ataru. Ironically, or not that, Ataru, it's Demso, my bad. Demso is what Gemso uh, Anakin is uses. fifth. Yeah, he uses Gemso. Uh, Ataru is Yoda. Yeah. Ataru is Yoda, he uses Gemso. Form 3 is fucking Obi Wan. Form 1 is. Flygon. No, what? that's Form 4. Uh, form thought... 1 is. Kid Fisto, I don't know who he's... Uh, form 2 is Count Dooku. Form 6, we don't actually have a Form 6 guy, because it's actually... It's the Jack of All Trades Master of None Style, and then 7's, like, mainly Sidious and Maul. Yeah. Uh, I know my shit, Jake. I spent a very long time building up the knowledge that I've built. I grew up with Legends, child. Fuck? I'm over here, like, watching the movies and playing the Lego Star Wars video game and 100%ing that bitch, and you're over here just playing KOTOR. Four hours. Did, you, did I tell you about the time I, I spent 27 hours straight playing yes, KOTOR 2? Yes, you said you didn't leave your bed. No room. restoration mod either. This man's over here just taking a piss. And it wasn't here, it was at my grandma's. Oh, God. I had a shitty desk chair, and I sat in that bitch for 20 hours, and then I laid down for the other seven. <laughs> I played through the, I trucked that whole game. Oh, it was so good. Play KOTOR if you can. It's, Anyways, it's worth it. Let's get back to the topic. Okay, so good things. Dooku uh, that, versus uh, I don't Anakin think the Dooku movie. fights that great. Uh, Dooku Yoda's actually pretty good. Okay. <laughs> now, now, well, because it's it, you get to see more of the actual fighting instead yeah. of these stupid close-up dark shots. I mean, one of the things that I actually liked was the fact that Anakin thought he could he was tough shit with two sabers, and then Luke, and then yeah, he, he had and then Dooku's like, no. And then the comics they explain it really well. He tries to learn all seven styles because he wants to be the best at them. But then he gives up and just sticks with Gem Show because yep. he's really sloppy. He can't handle dual wielding very well. Yeah, we saw that. He kind of lost a hand to it. Yeah. More than a hand, but yeah. Um, like an arm. <laughs> and a, like a half arm. Elbow down. There goes the righty. Ah, oh, damn. There goes his J arm. But now he's got a fucking machine arm, so he's just, you're like, it's still going! Um, yeah, I'm not getting monetized. No, it's okay. Uh, Is he monetized? Uh, I don't, you don't make any money off No, I don't make shit off this, anyways. But. Uh, one of the other things that happened, God, what was good things? The clones. Were those good? Clones were good, yeah. Good CG. Camino. The CG Camino inside was, Camino. It's, it's even hallways. more proof of how good the world building is because you got Geonosis that looks amazing. Camino looks amazing. The outside of Camino does, but walking through the hallways is fucking obnoxious. Like in that, every game, that it's powder in. white light just really. Yeah, it's really bright. good in the movies, but when you're playing Battlefront 2 or a Lego oh. game, it's not fun. I don't have a problem with Battlefront 2, but it's the fact that they're just... It's the amount of lighting. Like, the, the having an all-white room is okay. Yeah, because white, re, white reflects light. Yeah, if you had, like, a yellow lighting or just a dim blue, you'd be easier to see. Dim blue would be really good, yeah. But, uh, yeah, then... Otherwise, no, I don't Yeah, room building was really good. Okay, let's give the bad shit. So much. Well, <laughs> so much. So we're just gonna we're just gonna narrow this down really quickly. Um, Luke, Anakin and Padme. Anakin. Everything with Anakin and Padme. I mean, every fucking second of that <laughs> sand hating relationship. The only time I didn't have a problem was the Genos and Arena battle, where they didn't talk at all <laughs> for like two seconds. They looked at each they other. Get, like, one that's the, the only time it's okay. She Anakin is a on character. She kisses him on the cheek and they go kick ass. That's all I care about. That's cool. That's because they're doing stuff instead of laying in a fucking flower yard and just t- t- talking about sand. I the can't joke. The joke about sand just went over my head and I'm, I, 
I'm an adult, and it still went over my fucking head. What joke? The whole, oh, I don't know, some of the senators I don't trust him. He looks her dead in the eye without <laughs> smiling, and she goes, you're joking with me. Like, just deadpan, like, what the fuck? Am I stupid? Probably. Well, also, he can probably, like, sense it. You know, the force. Are we talking about her horniness for him, or what? No, he could probably just sense that he she was lying. Oh. So it probably was a really hard to pick up joke. It might have just genuinely been hard to pick up. And, you know, because we already know you can read minds. Thanks, Kylo. I actually think that ability is really cool. I'll talk about how much I oh, love yeah. Ky- Kylo. Oh, yeah. Kylo was my... able to read minds before Kylo was. Kylo is, like, top five characters. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just really like Kylo Ren. I will tell you why. I, I have just... Justifi- we're going to have to get to that at some point. So I know, yeah. but well, I have plenty of justifications for it, I promise. Um, so, yeah, bad things. Uh, pretty much almost the whole movie, um, no. except for, like, the fight. Okay, so bad things. Um, I'll just make it simple. Obi- the one... opening scene. Opening. The opening scene where the ship explodes. Yeah, that was stupid. There was no point in that. Um, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, we already know, we already talked about Anakin Padme, like, everything except Geonosis. Yeah. The fact that Obi-Wan forgets who started doing the clone stuff and the fact that it was Darth Tyrannus. Or not even that. The fact that Psych we know that Jango... Fe- <clears throat> but Count Dooku continues it. Yeah. Um, the, the problem uh, with that is that he knows Jango Fett is bad guy that tried to kill Padme, which is clearly hired by the Dookie. Actually, he didn't know that part. Well, he Not doesn't even need to know that part. He just has to know the fact that Django is bad guy. They based clones off bad guy. Clones probably bad guy. That so, he, yeah. I know he's only a Jedi Knight, and no, I know no, he, he's got a point. No. I know he makes it makes a lot of bad decisions, but like that that seems like really. I feel like you should have told Yoda and been like, hey, they based off the bounty hunter. Should we be worried about that? Like I'd be worried about that. Um. <laughs> We should check these guys to make sure they're actually on our side. The other thing was, it was a biomechanical chip, so they can't exactly tra- track it. It used to be a different system. Yeah. I Honestly, I think the chip is a better idea than what originally Lucas was doing with like how they're just influenced really well. I think it's a better thing that it's the chip. I, I honestly believe that the chip was much better than influence because... Emotionally? It, it, yeah. Holy fuck! It, it, I think it adds much more... Um, it, add, it it makes it more believable that it could happen. Yeah, I think it's, it's really it's really are, stupid that it. They have been engineered. Exactly, I think it's it, I think it makes it more believable and then it, and like because you can, it makes it sad. Because before that, you're like, okay, they just they, I don't know, they just did it, huh? But no, when you have the context, the fact that they have microchips in their brains, it makes it a lot more believable and sad when it happens. And Rex and Clone Wars season Cody, seven, but we won't talk no, about it. They have no idea what's happening. They don't know why. They just have yeah. to do it. And then people live. With, they used to live with the grief afterwards too. Good soldiers follow orders. Yep. Um. So yeah, that was stupid. Uh, Geono- Okay, so both of them taking the trips to Geonosis was pretty bad, I think. Except I do like the, I you know not even that I think it's really stupid that Obi Wan's sitting here. No, he knows he did the clones because he's sitting there and he's like the Sith control more than you understand, boy. And clearly he didn't understand. connect the things. I don't know why he didn't connect the things. The exact cause. There's a dark lord in the Senate. Help me destroy him. And he's like, no, I don't believe you, bitch. Like that's all Obi Wan does. Like he made it clear to Obi Wan that he does not. He's not even. Duke he's not, not even a Sith. Sith to be a Sith. He just has a red lightsaber because he doesn't agree with them. He he literally just he 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 sees the problem that everyone else sees, and how the Jedi are really bad at doing their, their job right now. Like, um, that's all he did, did for it. He, so that that's another bad part. Um, Genos fights cool. Um, I Coleman Trevor, God powers. Honestly, I love Coleman Trevor just because he's stupid. <laughs> but I, I also love in the Genos fight you get to see a lot of cool Jedi. <laughs> like Mace um, went, my favorite thing about that whole fight is Mace Windu's like, I want to see me on the battlefield. Give me a purple lightsaber. Yeah, he actually. I saw the interview. That's funny as hell. Or not interview. That's that that like behind the scenes tip. You know that that's picture, funny. You know that picture of Leonardo DiCaprio where he's pointing at the TV. Someone photoshopped Samuel L. Jackson's face on top of that, saying when he's watching Attack of the Clones. Yep. <laughs> he's like the only black Jedi though. So I don't know what he's so worried about. Well, we could have had Finn, but that's a different topic for another day. Oh, dude, you have no idea how much I want to get into that topic and how angry it makes me. Well, we're gonna get there soon. And I fucking called it. I want to say this real quick before we get to that. When episode 7 came out, I fucking called that Finn was going to be force sensitive. I knew as soon as he started being a thing, 
because the force sensitive thing is what turned him. It was not just his brain, it was the will of the forest showing him with his force sensitiveness. And there's no way he can successfully wield a lightsaber the way he did. Even though it wasn't that good, he still did better than a lot of other people have. Okay? He had training as a fucking janitor. No. <laughs> well, he had the training with the fucking the, the baton thingy, which I would love to get a riot baton. That'd be so cool. Dude, they have him on the Black Series. You didn't know that? We gotta get those. They um, sell them? We, we gotta, gotta do scenes. We gotta do scenes. We gotta those. make that shit a PVC pipe and a taser. <laughs> <laughs> right. Remember, we can't hit each other with a... <laughs> oh, fuck! <laughs> I'm just picturing. It's like, hot. It's hot. I'm taking. Somebody, I'm picturing someone taking like aluminum foil or like a lot of like just metal shavings, super gluing it shit to PVC and then having a taser attached to it. Just. Or actually, I think it'd be better if you did the aluminum foil around it and then you put a flashlight through it. <laughs> so in in the actual pipe where it's holding the so the pipe right here with the two pieces like this, have the yeah. flashlight come out and make it look like it's reflecting light off the. No, we need with copper the, wires attached to the end of the fucking taser and running it through it and then having like a mini Tesla coil made on each end of the poles so when we hit each other we actually get like. 10,000 volts right through us. I was trying to make it more cool and not painful, but, you know, you I'm, do you, man. I'm a masochist. No, I'm just kidding. I'm a masochist. <laughs> um, so, yeah, those are the bad things. Episode 2, Anakin Padme, beginning, uh, Obi-Wan being an idiot, and what was the last one? Yoda. Oh, the fight between Dooku and uh, the two idiots. <laughs> uh, the the I do like the Dooku-Yoda fight. Oh, now I can finally talk about it. Here's why Yoda sucks. <laughs> Yoda should not be fighting in any war. He's too old. Not even too that. Old to begin he, the he's not that kind of Jedi. He's not that way in episodes five and six. He's a wise. He he teaches Luke Woo. the idea of resolving a conflict without violence. But goes and slaps the shit out of somebody. Exactly. It should have been some ship of Theseus type shit between Yoda and Dooku. Did when you he... really just make a joke about WandaVision over yeah, there? Yeah, that was a great scene. I think that fight was amazing. Am I the real Vision as a copy, or is the corpse telling me his Vision? Like... Exactly. Like that was a. Re... I I think that was one of the best part. That the would best part have of the a ending. meaning of the minds between an old student and this old master. Exactly. But... To be honest, that sounds cool. I yeah, but th that was my favorite part about fucking WandaVision and. That's what should have happened with Yoda and Dooku. It should have been a discussion. It shouldn't have been a fight. Because Yoda should not be fighting people. He is supposed to... Because the Jedi, their their main thing is they're supposed to resolve conflicts without violence. The whole war is a mistake. Yoda's over here like, hmm, resolve conflict, I will. Your ass is grass it is. <laughs> your, ass, your ass is grass it is. You don't know what you're doing, Master. Master. You're dumbass. Master Wayne. Master Wayne, the green Master elf. Master Wayne. Master Wayne. I mean, just won't torch you like that. Like some stupid shit like that, but... Fucking, what's the name of the original fucking Alfred? He's Alfred like, Pennyworth. Master Wayne. It, it's a property. <laughs> like the super British-y accent one. I fucking love that one. I love making fun of his voice. Anyway, uh, yeah. That's what I hate about Yoda. Yoda should not just be fighting people out of nowhere. He should be trying to resolve conflicts without violence, which is why I love episode 8 so much. But we'll get there. Um, Revenge of the Sith. Alright, we're on Revenge of the Sith now. Good parts. There's actually the most good parts in this one Grievous. out of all three of them, which isn't saying much. Grievous. I. Oh, you don't man. like Grievous? Oh no, no, I do like Grievous. I'm just saying, like, even like even just in the movie, he's awesome. But then you've got. Well, Some okay, actually, here I'll. I'll I gotta remember. The, okay, so without context, Grievous is kind of stupid. Grievous is kind of like what Dooku is to episode 2. He's just a big bad for someone to fight halfway through the movie so people don't get bored. But He lasts until the end of the movie. But he's only there for that big fight. That's really why they put him in episode 3. But, with outside, but um, technically, if we count the original cartoon, he was already a thing. Yeah, from 2003. But most people didn't fucking see that cartoon. That amazing, beautiful work of art. Yeah. But, dude, fucking, they changed Grievous. I don't, see, that's the only thing I don't like about New Clone Wars. I don't like that they changed Grievous and made him a coward. I like when he was a badass. Well, what happened was, this is a continuation. That TV show still exists. Like, I believe it's still part of the ca canon. Clone no, it's Clone. Legends. It's Legends now? Yeah. What they did is they, uh, Grievous has always been a coward. Like, even in 2005, he ran away from Obi-Wan. He's like, all right, fuck this. Whoop! No, but, like, remember when he fought those five Jedi and he killed Shaggy? Yes, did you really just make that Padawan's name Shaggy? That's who he's based on. Please Why do you think he looks... Not. That's actually... That Padawan is based on Shaggy. Why do you think he looks like that? I didn't use 100% of my power, man. 
<laughs> Check out my pack set, oh man. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, you haven't seen that. Okay, uh, I we'll have. Keep dis- it's just been a while. Um, yeah. I'm gonna check my phone, but uh, yeah. So episode three, we'll talk about good things. Grief is a good thing, but we gotta go from beginning to end. So beginning sequence, every oh! everything leading oh! up to the ship crashing is just it's, <gasps> it's really good. It's orgasmic. Now here's the problem with Anakin in episode two. He's a sociopathic murderer, but in episode three, He's we a... we have so many different character developing things that make him an interesting character. He's a snark First, little... he wants. He wants to save the clones yeah. in, in the beginning. So it shows immediately that he is not an insane person anymore. Um, the ship battle, it's all one take in CG. It's amazingly shot. Like, the fact that they pulled all that off is amazing, for he, the time especially. He's also a snarky little badass now. Not really snarky, he's more just, like, cool. He makes little quips and all that. This is really he's like the he's Spider-Man here. of Jedi at that point. Yeah, and then the the duel between Dooku and Obi Wan and Anakin was really nice. Even the ending good. with "Do it" um, it was he, really good. He inherited the powers of the mullet, and he went and kicked ass. Yep, <laughs> he used the dark side to beat a man who wasn't even trying to kill him. So, nailed it. Um, I think everything was shot really well, like the ship crashing and everything. So that was all really good. Just that whole opening sequence is amazing. Um, it the, is the definitely my he, favorite part of the, about the movie. The fact that he realizes his training and he thanks Oboan, not knowing this is the last time they're going to see each other on good terms. When they, yeah, when they're leaving. Yeah, when he's... That, that does suck. That blows. Really if bad. you look at the, the lighting on it where he goes, oh, um, no, this is my for politics. This is all you. And he's just standing there like a dirty fucking robe and Anakin's like, I'm still clean. Um... But yeah, you're right. It's it's That's another stat. A lot of it's really good. And even the, even the part with Anakin and Padme is like the... They're still awkward, but they're not. But they're, they're not. They're, they're not the focus anymore. So when they're in there, it's just it's just little development pieces. I don't I don't mind seeing those little scenes where they're like, no, it's because I'm mm-hmm. so in love with you. Like I don't mind that anymore. Be excellent to each other. Um, <laughs> Bill and Ted. Use the force. I like how we do the same shit. Like the whole, put your hand in your chest, put your hand out. Use the force, <laughs> man. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> Stallion, uh, no. I the, one of the main things I like about Hayden Christensen in, in this movie is the fact when she tells him that he, they're pregnant. Yeah, everyone he knows. knows everyone every knows every single emotion. We've seen that Cosmonaut video where he talks about it. I've never. He, I don't even actually watch Cosmonaut. Oh uh, well, Cosmonaut brought it up too. Um, and Cinema Wins actually. Sorry, I'm thinking of Cinema Wins. Cinema Wins brought it up because uh, he did all the Star Wars movies. Yeah. And yeah, he he. Hayden Christensen's a really good actor. He is. George Lucas just really sucked at using him for like 80% of the movies. But <laughs> he actually gets to show off his chops a little bit when he shows that emotion of like, oh my god, I'm excited. Oh my, oh my god, god, what am I going to do? It's, oh my god, I'm going to be a dad. Oh my god, I'm going to be a dad. Oh my god, I'm going to be a dad. Like shit like that. Yeah, like, it's like a lot of it's Oh my a lot god, of I'm going to be a dad. Like, um, what's the next good part, like chronologically in the movie? Um, uh, politics are boring. They're stupid. They don't need to be in Star Wars. The opera scene. We don't need it. The opera scene. Opera scene's amazing. We already knew that. And well, we, we have to put it on the list, don't we? Duh. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, opera scene is um, one of the... He save himself. You're gloating, aren't you, you old fuck? He is the... That is the actual best scene in the entire prequel trilogy. Even according to uh, Ian McDermott, he loves that scene. Yeah, everyone loves that scene. It's it's like one of the best... Because Ian McDermott's just a really good actor. He is. He is also one of the original Palpatines. He is the original Palpatine. No, uh, different Palpatine for... Episode 5. Yes. But from Return but for of the Jedi. But for 6 on, yes, he is that, yeah. he has that and one. And then when they redubbed everything in the uh, early 2000s for the re-release, they put them over. So yeah, that scene was really good. Um, opera scene's really good. What else? Um... Anakin sitting in the Jedi Council chamber when he tells Mace Windu that he's... We'll get to that. we got to talk about Grievous first. Oh, yeah. Uh, Grievous fight. Uh, half of it's stupid, half of it's cool. The ending of it's really cool. Oh, the, way, the way it starts, I like. Hello there. Hello there. <laughs> General Kenobi! You General are Kenobi! You are a what? Like... No shit, Sherlock. Pew. So that beginning is really cool. The chase scene is stupid. Really stupid. I hate yeah. it. I hate it a lot. But I love the ending and how he kind of outwits him. 
Also, I, there's so a uncivilized. there's a part where they're fighting, and um, I love that Obi Wan with pure adrenaline tries to kick Grievous in the shin, and he's like, ah! Yeah, yeah. like he doesn't think about it. He just goes. It was an, it was an adrenaline. What? It was like his, his adrenaline kicked in, and he just instinctively is like, clink, and he's like, ah! <laughs> and he fucking screams too. Yeah, he does. He's like, he's like. Phew. Oh, he's it's, like it's what immediate regret looks like uh, in a in a fifty year old man. Uh, it's immediate. He wasn't fifty. He was like thirty. He was fifty three in that movie. Chronologically, no, he's like thirty. No, he's he's older than that. He didn't turn fifty. No, he had gray in his hair. On that, the sides, right here, the sideburns. No, no he had to be in his fifties. I will I will look up the chronological age while you keep talking about good scenes. But yeah, the him uh, Council Chamber is really good. Trying to kick the shit out of Grievous is probably one of the funniest fucking parts of that film. Right next to every time he goes to slay younglings, I laugh. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, but the next part would be the chamber scene when he go when he figures out that Palpatine is a Sith, and instead of like killing him instantly or doing that or like leaving him alone, or whatever, he goes and tells Mace because that's Anakin still trying to follow the Jedi code. It's a nice development. He's thirty five. 35? Yes. In Return of the Jedi? Yes. Re- 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 Revenge of the Sith? Sorry. Sith of the Revenge, yes. The Return of the Sith? Whatever. Return of the Return of the Jedi? He's 35? Return of the Sith. Dude, that Jedi. means... I told you, he was really... Because he ages really fast on Tatooine. Oh, yeah, it's because of the depression. The sand kicks in. Yeah, and also the fact that there is fucking two suns beating on you all the time. Well, that doesn't explain Luke being 19 and looking 19. Obi Wan doesn't start in Tatooine. I think that so I think what happens is the combination of the grief, along with the fact he's never actually lived in Tatooine until that point. Yeah. I think com- he's not used to the conditions. Luke was living. Dehydration probably kicked his ass. For yeah, a that too. Like I think it's just a combination of the stress, the grief, and the fact the two sons that he's not used to living around fucked him up. Um, with Luke, he grew up in it, so he's kind of used to it. And maybe he honestly he looks like he's in his twenties when he's already nineteen, so he's probably aging a little bit faster too. But he's adapted to it more. But yeah, he's only 35 in that. Um, Damn, so Grievous scene was good. What, um, and then we got the part where Anakin goes to the fucking... Er, oh, the part where he goes to... Um, no, to that that, that to, makes sense. Because... To, what goes to What's-His-Face. The, the, oh, the chamber scene's really sad because the the prevailing theory right now is the reason he why was he was sent... Yeah, he was... A master. Yes, the prevailing theory right now is the reason why he was sent to the chamber is because... Um, fuck, what's his name? Maze. Mace Windu sent him there because he didn't trust him until that point, but he trusted him with the info instead of just doing it himself and trying to kill him. He trusted Mace with that info, so he, he Mace in turn trusts him for telling him, so he goes and recklessly brings three masters that clearly did not belong there. Um, like, Jesus Christ, why would you why would you risk the lives of people when you know if this dude's able to hide under a cloak and pretend to be a senator for this long he wasn't pretending that was his actual job the problem was it was a fact that had mace it fell he or he had he was able to hide his persona he did exactly what palpatine planned you with exactly mace yep. broke so many laws walking in there and going to arrest him legally with no evidence like nothing like there it, it was treason it was just flat out what he wanted to do. So when Mace walks in like Gung Ho, like, I'm about to smack the shit out your motherfucking ass. Palpatine's like, oh, really? And that's where the legality part comes in where he goes, it's treason then. Yeah, and uh, another theory, Star Wars theory came up with this idea, and I think it's probably true. They probably had cameras in the office. Mm-hmm. So everything that Palpatine said was on purpose to get them to... to um, so if he, if he did lose and he had to escape, he had that evidence with him. And also... It's not illegal to be a Sith. No, it's not. It was in the Old Republic, it's but it just changed. It's against the Jedi Code. Exactly. And the Jedi don't run the government, which is no. another problem the Jedi had was trying to get involved in government too much, which you're not supposed to. You're supposed to enforce the will of the Force, not the will of the people. Government Fuck. also got involved with the Jedi by Palpatine instituting Anakin in there. Yep. And forcing him on the Council. That is not <sighs> okay. That That's one of the things, like, as a plot device, <sighs> mad. Yeah. Everything that Palpatine did in that movie was the only time he was ever smart. Uh, debatable. Um, he tried to kill Padme before he even knew. Yeah, I know. Come on, come on. He sent he it's sent Dooku only to part. send a bounty hunter to send another uh-uh, bounty hunter uh-uh, uh-uh. to send a robot to send bugs to kill Padme. So a man. Sent a man, sent a man, sent a changeling, sent a robot that sent bugs to kill a senator and didn't even succeed. I'm not going to deny you, because you're not wrong. 
But let's jump back on topic. Um, oh, God. What's the... And then... Well, we're probably going to disagree on the obi Annie fight, because that's, like, the last part to bring up. Oh, no. no, actually, the part where um, Obi-Wan tells Padme about the young lady. <laughs> oh, that was sad. No, we skipped one part. We skipped one part. The turn? Yes. Eh. Not a fan? No, it feels rushed. It, well, I mean, it kind of had to be, to be honest. Yeah, that's the problem with those movies, is they didn't build Anakin enough. Because those are Anakin's... They're supposed to be Anakin and Palpatine's movies. But yeah. the problem is there's not really enough of both of them. Either. Like, they're just the star of the third film. The rest of them are just building with Obi-Wan the whole time. I think it should have... I think it should have been, like, a, a focus between all three of them from the first movie all the way to the third. Yeah. But they didn't do it that way, so when the conclusion comes where Anakin does finally turn, it doesn't feel as cohesive as it, as it should have. Mm -hmm. But Clone Wars obviously fixed that when they did their version. Oh, my God. And they made it really nice. But yeah, um, that was my problem with it. I think it was just rushed. I don't. I think it was kind of stupid that he turned the way he did because he knew that he was the bad guy, and then he's just gonna go kill all his friends. Well, the other thing that was a driving factor of it, which isn't the best of motive, Padme. It, Padme. It was stupid. But it was the fact that he already lost his mother, and he had an attachment to his mother, and the fact that he had the. I can understand why the character would do it. I can understand it, but the way it was. Done. Now, I know it's probably due to his arrogance, but I think Anakin <laughs> should have been able to connect the pieces a bit better and understand that he could have been manipulated into having those dreams. He was also told from a young age that he could see the future. So it's a conflicting thing of, like, do I believe this or this? And the other thing was, yeah, Palpatine true. is like a grandfather to him, and Obi-Wan is like a dad. So who do you listen to? The cracked out uncle in the corner that's, like, four foot tall and says, forget your feelings, you should. Or do you listen to... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> or do you listen to your grandfather that says, you are more than what they let you be. You are amazing, whether you like to hear that but or not. But even that, you've got Obi-Wan telling him, like, he's, he, he finally tells him in the movie, he's like, you're, you're amazing, you're far better that than I That is what he's been be. searching for 13 years, but Palpatine has been giving to him for those 13 years. I'm not. I'm not shooting you down. It's just. It's. It's exactly what. But it, it only saying. builds up really in episode three. You don't see too much of it in two, like ever. You do see a little bit, but not a lot. You don't get enough of it to justify it. You've yeah. got about because you've got him and Obi Wan being together for all this time, and then you got Palpatine who jumps in at episode three and is like, "We're friends, Anakin. Do you want to hear about me being a Sithy Sith?" And then you've got Obi Wan who's been who's been teaching uh, all these years and gives hold him the fuck up a Sithy Sith. Sithy Sith, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you've got Obi Wan, who's been teaching him for years, and then did give him finally give him the pr approval. But here, I feel like he already knew because they've been adventuring together for years and years and years. Clone Wars also showed us that there is times where they actually appreciate each other, but there's also times where Palpatine just kind of like leans over like the stepdad that wants to be involved. Yeah, and even in Clone yeah. Wars, they show that Obi Wan and him were closer than him and Palpatine ever were. Mm, the other thing is they save the Chancellor like eight times. Yeah. Which is funny when you think about the fact that he's literally controlling both sides of that war. So yeah, he's it's like he he's knows he's not going to get hurt, but him. he knows he wants his boys in blue to come grab him. It's so stupid. He, to be honest, the manipulation is probably one of the longest cons in that TV show. TV show. Yeah. It's the fact that. Well, the other thing is. Uh, I just I hate the fact that he's willing to turn on Obi Wan so easily when he he already know like he already knows Obi Wan likes him. He already knows that he's like he knows he can trust Obi Wan. The other thing that we want to look at is the psychology of Vader. Like, if you look at it right here, Anakin Skywalker died. As soon... Not, not, like, not like... No, I know what you mean. Fully. Like, he wasn't that's my gone. same argument for, um, for Ray Palpatine, which we'll get to. <laughs> I use that same argument for Ray, and people get mad when I do that, because well, they just can't accept the fact that Ray is not that bad of a character. Anakin did what he had to do because he wanted... His selfishness took over. He finally gave in to the years of dumbassery that he was doing. Like, he went and killed all those people for no fucking reason. Aside from, oh yeah, you killed my mother. Which, he's not supposed to have attachments. He already broke that rule. He's been going And even on then, even, that's the other thing, too. I, I That's where it annoys me, because I feel like if he would have just told the council... Like, Star Wars Theory did a good theory on this. If he would have just talked to the council and been like, You know what? Fuck it. I have a wife and kids happening. You've got Keanu Mooney, who's got the exact same thing. He did? Yeah, he had kids. Or at oh. least he has a wife. He has a wife. Obi-Wan had love with Satine. And Obi-Wan would defend Anakin, of course. But Obi-Wan's not a hypocrite if he does because he gave up on that. He kept away from it and stayed with the Order. He didn't stay with but Satine. But then he came back to Satine and Satine got avoided. 
in Clone Wars. Yeah, the difference with that is they both kind of reconcile with their feelings. And I, if they could justify it because the Jedi are about peace and love. Not sexual or attachment love. It's, but according to Anakin, compassion for all living things. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing, though. It is a compa- like, it's a compassion thing. You can, I think you can justify having someone... And be a Jedi. Like, fucking... But it also brings in the path that Yoda talks about selfishness and bullshit and how you can't have connections with anybody because it makes you Yeah, defensive. and th- those those mistakes are what led the Order to yes. be destroyed. But um, it, it's, it's a weird point when you talk about it because when you go back to Vader's mentality, it's, I am going to be strong enough to do whatever the fuck I want when I have to do it. Maybe not, like, in... Yeah, in Revenge of the Sith, that's exactly what it is. It's I've, everything, everything that I've been told is a lie. Everything I'm doing is to save somebody, and in the end, he ends up killing her in an accident. Or my personal favorite theory is the fact that Palpatine, the way he figured out reviving people was stealing oh, yeah, everyone, life force. That's what happened. Yeah, that's my personal theory. I have that, or dude, my, everyone believes that one. That's exactly what it is. Because the exact moment that he stops breathing is when Padme dies, and then he starts breathing again. Yeah, and you can also hear him... Oh my fucking god, if you listen so closely to the, the audio of when he puts the helmet on for the very first time, he goes, Padme, help. Oh yeah, you're right. I didn't know that until I put on my big ass headphones. It was like, when it's a, it was a shock and awe moment, because I'm like, no fucking way. So yeah, those are the, oh, and then, okay, I'm going to talk about the crown of the obi Annie fight. Okay. Um, it's too long. It's, it's too much. ten minutes. It's, that's the problem, it's ten fuck, the, it's not actually 10 minutes, because if you look at it... It's cut in between... Palpatine yeah, it's cut in though. between, like, different parts of it. It lasts so long throughout, like, the... Uh, both the fights in that movie to me are bad. <laughs> the, um, the the dialogue between Anakin and Obi-Wan is probably... That part's good. Um, so the beginning of the fight's pretty good, and the ending of the fight's pretty good. But also, Obi-Wan's being stupid because... Sith, only a seal deals in absolutes is an absolute statement itself. So the dialogue choices were not the best in that degree. Because if you're not with me, then you're my enemy. What? No shit, Sherlock. How'd you get to that conclusion? Now that one is fine, but when he says the absolute line, I get kind of annoyed because it's not. What I get annoyed is, from my point of view, the Jedi are evil. Like, this sounds like two five-year-olds trying to figure out who's right. To me. That argument while they're standing over the lava saying, Then you are lost! Actually, I think that seems really good because it shows that if Obi-Wan had a cooler head, he could have... He, he had a small chance of bringing him back. If he would have... If he would have just asked him why he thought that was the case, if he would have just poked a little bit and tried to figure it out, you can't they exactly, could have talked. To be fair, you can't exactly poke when your child is holding a sword at your throat. But think about it like this. Imagine if Yoda was in that position. Yoda would the go fucking... The good Yoda. The one gonna... from episodes four and... Four, four, not four, sorry. Four. Five and six. That Yoda. Say, the one that d- described... The, the one... The one that described the Force correctly. The, that Yoda. Okay, let's look at it this way. Yoda... Luke pulled the same kind of shit Yoda did. With... Uh, with... Uh, with Vader? I failed. I'm gonna go high. Hide. Not high. He's high as fuck on Dagobah, but... <laughs> but that's the thing. That's where he beats Yoda in that aspect, because he does come back. True. And he and he creates probably my favorite Star Wars ending of all time. But we're, we're, about get, to, we're about to get to that. We're, we're getting there. Well, we got to go through episode seven too. But <sighs> episode seven is gonna be easy, so it's whatever. Yeah, it's just a copy of number four. <laughs> but well, I'll I'll just I, I'll tell you why I think that was actually a good thing. I I understand why they did it. Safe bet, yeah. Um. So yeah, three was the best of the three, but that was my default. The worst parts of that, the bad parts would be, again. Padme and them is kind of like on a plateau. They're they're not dog water anymore. Do you want to do you want to rate the the movies on a scale of one to ten as we go through them? Sure. What do you want to rank number one? Because I give it a five. It's pretty good. It's I give it. It's not bad. It's not great. Four. Okay. What about number two? Three. Three. <laughs> number three, seven. It's not the best one. Uh, I give it a six point five. Yeah, it, it's still better than the other. It's a passing grade, but it's a passing Star Wars movie, but it could be better. And I have friends that would disagree with me completely because they... There are a lot of people that think it's the greatest movie of all time. And those people are weird. I'm not going to shoot them down for what they like. It's just personally, I'm not going to rank it as the best because I like Empire Strikes Back. That's my favorite. My favorite is a mix between 8, 4, and 5. Yeah, we were talking about rankings before. Mine goes 5. 3 was number 2 for a while, but then... 
that's where I was too. I thought three was really good, but then when I started getting older and analyzing the movies, but yeah, um, yeah. So I'll say three. I'll give it, or I'll give four, three, and six point five. You said five, six, four, three. Why'd you rate the second movie higher than the first one? Reasons we'll get to later. All right. Now we talk about sequels. Now we talk about you, not your favorites, but your like second favorites. What I pre- the trilogy I prefer out of the two. The trilogy I'm not. Okay, a fan so of. episode seven, it's not completely a carbon copy of episode four, but there's a reason why <laughs> it was done this way. It was done because it was the first Disney movie. It ha- they couldn't take too many risks yet, and they did in episode eight. But the biggest problems of, uh, I will say the biggest problem is the sequel trilogy not planned out. That's the problem. It's not cohesive. <laughs> that is the biggest problem. We already know that. We can acknowledge that. And I can acknowledge that as a huge sequel fan. But um, episode seven. I think episode seven is pretty good for what it is. Yeah. Um, I know people see this carbon copy, but there's a lot of things that do set it apart from episode four. A lot of things. Well, First of one, all, the characters you... are not the same. True. They're not the same people at all. Finn and... There's no Han, there's no Luke, there's none of that. Han Solo became the Obi-Wan. Like, he became the old yeah, man exactly. that dies. Yeah, the character who was the character became, like, the somebody who was already established There's a lot of rule. similarities, they're not the same. So it's... Yeah, the plots are, like, very similar, but the the emotional context behind everything happening is very different. You've got Rey, who is not Luke at all, not even the same person. Luke is someone who is very willing to leave home. He wanted to go explore and do whatever he wanted. She's stuck Rey, on the fact that she's supposed to be picked up. Yeah, she has like a sense of Stockholm Syndrome attached to this place. She doesn't want to leave. Yeah. Then you've got Finn, who is not Han ever. It will never be Han because Finn, Finn's such... Poe is more of a Han than Finn will ever be. And even then, Finn, Poe is, po is still quite a bit different than Han, to me anyway. Frankly... I honestly thought it would be cool to have an ex stormtrooper be a Jedi, but that's already been that's already been talked about enough. We don't have to. Talk yeah. About so that Finn's wasted potential. We already know. I was a huge Finn fan, still am. Um, just not happy with what they did with him. They had so just fucking they, just one job, Moving one job. A little bit. So um, episode seven, good things that happened in that movie. Honestly, Star Killer base being Elam. I can't really think of anything that bad in the movie. I, I don't have any true flaws to stick out. That's the main something I never had an issue with. Was episode 7 was like, yeah, it's okay. The problem, the only problem with episode 7 is it's not a good rewatch. It's also not the best development for Kylo Ren. And he looks fucking weird. It's they like... give him the best development in episodes 8 through 9. Yeah. For sure. Because Adam gets to branch out a little bit, but the whole... But I think mm-hmm. seven. I think 7 gets away with it because they're establishing he's a bad guy. So it's fine. I wouldn't give. He him, doesn't need a ton of development I'm not yet. Giving him a pass because even if they pulled the same shit with Vader. He had twelve minutes of screen time. And yeah, exactly. It, it, he's main baddie, but like he's not the main baddie in that movie. But is Snoke? Snoke was never the main villain. No, Snoke was like supposed to be the Emperor Palpatine. Then Ryan Johnson's like, nah, fam. Um, I'll, I'll I'll speak on why I, I'm okay with that. Go ahead. Um, but episode seven, uh, yeah, I there's no really big flaws to me. I I think. I think Ray is actually not that bad of a character. I've never hated Ray. I don't get Ray haters, to be honest. Because think... everything that they compare her to, like, being great with the Force, Luke had the same problems, but nobody gets on Luke about it. You know what I mean? Like, discovering the Force. How that's a big, ex- that's how a big argument. How is he an X-Wing pilot if he flew a T-16s? Exactly. And then you get mad when Ray's a pilot, when she used to scrap and investigate ships all the time. And in the books, she is a pilot. The other she works problem, with ships all the time. The problem I want to look at is the fact that scrapping ships is not flying them. So I can. She does that. fly them in the books. I haven't read the books, so I'm not talking about the. So books. canonically, she had. It's the same thing with Luke. Most yeah. of Luke's flying was done all in the books. Same thing with Ray. They're very similar in ways like that, but their character themselves are very different. Parents abandoned them on a desert. Abandoned, quote unquote. Uh, uh, well, one of them was almost murdered, and then they both basically got dropped but and hidden. Completely different, though, because Luke had parent figures in his life. Ray, Ray, had Ray li- yeah, she had nothing. Yeah. So she, she's a lone survivor, and then you've got Luke, who's who gets friends and is able to easily be with people. And then um, uh, Finn and Poe should have been gay. We already know that, though. They what? should, they should have been gay lovers for sure. It's whatever. Then, the, then you would have they... the, then you would have had the bigots going, oh, this is trying to be our inclusion. <laughs> But no, that, that, I think that was such a natural... Like, the, the pro- it's see, a bromance. They did the problem that we're worried about with episode 9 when they just throw in a last kiss scene between two chicks. But Whatever. The, they had a really good opportunity with Finn and Poe to actually have that natural thing to be 
sort of, um, well, I, I, like, it have that diversity of, like, a, a homosexual Homese relationship. It's but not between... homosexual, it's homosexual. Homosexual, they, yeah. they, they They had a chance to make a natural homosexual relationship with Finn and Poe because from the very beginning, they ha it's there. They have a good yeah. chemistry together, and it works, but they don't build up on it because they decided that a last-minute kiss scene in episode 9 should be more important with two characters we didn't even know. I honestly don't mind if you want to put something. We put something in movie. Just at least find a way to put a decent background in it. That's why. That's why I say the Finn and Poe thing was so much better than whatever the fuck they did later. Um, but yeah, that should have been a thing. That was probably my only like, big quarrel with episode quarrel. seven. But episode seven built on the idea that it could have already been a thing. So I don't give it. I don't give it that flaw. Um, I think the final battle between Ray and Kylo is severely underrated for what it is. I know what irritates me with that movie. What? You exactly what you're talking about. It's the. The whole oh yeah I fought with a staff, then blew a lightsaber. Or the whole you were you said discovering the force. Sorry, I kind of zoned out for a second. Uh, we, which one do you want to talk about? Discovering the force. When she like, give me the lightsaber, bitch, and just when she yoinks the shit away from Kylo, like that's one of the main things that sticks out of me because Luke couldn't even do that till episode five. He didn't. He he didn't even know he could do it though, and he just did it. Yeah. And the, the, the thing that Ray, like, well, I've already told you this before. Ray has something on Luke that Luke never had. She was exposed to it directly, all right? We know, we know that, right? What Luke was never truly exposed to the Force. It wasn't thrown in his face and, like, this is what it feels like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that, that happened to Ray. She, it, like, it got thrown in her face by Kylo, like, when he was trying to, like, mind control. She was like, I feel something. There's something there. What are you doing, Step Sith? Like the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's there's something there. It kind of like I like I said in my TikToks when I I ranted about it. He kind of what happened was the door kind of got propped open. She kicked it open. Luke had to find the key to open that door. You know what I mean? The key was supposed to be Obi Wan. Exactly, and he he was had to find it on his own. And Obi Wan gets. And that's why the progression was slower for Luke than it was for Ray because Ray was very exposed. She like um she was more exposed to combat than. Uh, Luke was. We already know that. And yeah. both staff training is transferable to swords. Yeah. We, we, we already know that, though. We, we've talked about this. We, yeah. we... The only problem is I just... Fuck, dude. Like, it's the whole... Oh, yeah, I can move shit with my mind. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Like, that's... Where did she know that? Where did Luke know it? Fair. That, that's that the thing. Fair. You gotta hold them both accountable. You either I have to say I they're... I honestly couldn't say no to that because I think... Like, you either have to say to they're him, both bullshit or they're both fine. The only time we got to see Luke using the Force was with the shield down when he was practicing with the drone in episode four. Yeah, and, and like, even... Oh yeah, I can just make a shot. Boom. Yeah, and even then you could say Ray was doing the same thing when she was flying because she instinctively knew how to fly. Apparently she could fly Millennium Falcon better than Han Solo for a second. Woo! Like that, 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 that... How are you going to fly the flying pancake and not fuck it up a little bit? She did. She knocked the fucking radar off by accident when she flew in the thing, remember? No, that was Lando Calrissian inside the Death Star 2. She almost dinked it a couple times in the fucking she Star She scratched Strike. it in The Last Jedi. And then, oh, I know what you're talking about. She came out and, like, <laughs> scrapped, scratched the ass end of yeah, that. Yeah, she, she didn't completely do it perfectly. I'm sorry, I forgot She about clearly that one, didn't but... know, like, completely what she was doing with she that She could kid. still bank with that motherfucker like it was nothing. Yeah, but so could Han. Han fucking, what, 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 what what's the, what's the story again? Uh, six parsecs or whatever? Twelve. Twelve parsecs. Fucking, he, he that. never flew that shit beforehand. We and then he came that. out and fucking, he nailed the Kessel Run in twelve parsecs. No. So even then you could, and he and he's also technically uh, he has he actually has he a pretty like, high con, uh, midichlorian content, like six thousand I think, which isn't bit, enough to be a Jedi. You need no, to be like in the ten thousand. A little bit higher than a human. Exactly. So he even he has a little bit of that, and he has a little bit of that force convenience in him. So like I said, we if we're Never gonna tell me the odds, like if, oh, if, fuck, if, there it goes. if we do complain about the sequels and that convenience, we have to hold everything accountable. Yeah, I, I, that's what I believe. That's why I'm able to. Ar that's why I argue with these people so much because they don't hold everything accountable. They mm -hmm. just pick and choose because there's a female lead and they think they're trying to be progressive. When actually having a female lead is not that bad of an idea. It just no. wasn't executed as good as it could have been. But neither was Anakin. It took it took a whole show for no, him to ever be good. Anakin was just a bitch. No. Anakin needed a show. That, that's the thing. Anakin needed a whole show to make him a good character. Fair enough. They did. Clone Wars. Exactly. Seven series. That's what I'm saying. Series seven. Fuck. We gotta talk about that later. So yeah. Um, so Ray flying makes sense. I think the sword fight. So here's the thing. Uh, a lot of people don't like the... Lightsaber fight between Kylo and Rey. Uh, the first complaint is the clunkiness. And how Here's did the... she beat him? 
That's the second one I've always heard. Yeah. So we'll answer both those right now. Uh, I already know the answer to the why did she beat him. He wasn't trying to kill her. He was trying to recruit her multiple times. Yeah. He wasn't, he never wanted to kill her because he knew he that she was strong. <laughs> yeah. She wanted that Jedi puss. He, he, so Kylo's a simp confirmed. <laughs> He's always a simp confirmed. So yeah, that, that's why he didn't win because he was trying so hard to not kill her. That she was able to find the weakness. I know what's bad about this movie. We got introduced to the Knights of Ren, and then nothing else came out. That's of another. Yeah, that, that is a bad part. I but, completely forgot about them because you know there's not much about them in the movie. But that's not Episode Seven's fault. That's Episode Nine's fault. Well, it's also the fact that JJ's like, now nah, we're just gonna forget about him. And he's the one who fucking introduced him. Yeah, you see what I mean? But and honestly, I don't think Ryan Johnson is a bad director. I I have a lot. To I just share don't like him. the I don't like the direction Last Jedi went, but I can understand certain things. Uh, the, I, I there's parts of it I don't like either, and I'm a huge shill for that movie. So so yeah, that's the thing with Episode Seven. Usually, it's a pretty good movie. A lot of things that people complain about are present in all the movies, but they're not willing to accept yeah. it. Ah, fucking elbow. Yeah, sorry. So uh, I would rate, I would rate Episode Seven. I'd give it a four. I give it a seven. It's kind of ironic compared to the prequel because like all the all the original trilogy is like tens except for six, which is like eight. Mm. I personally wouldn't put it that high because frankly, if we're gonna put it around the same kind of leveling the Phantom Menace was, it's kind of boring for a while. It's got the same kind of stuff, but it's got it's got better action pieces set within it, and then the you've CGI also got characters also that are new. actually interesting. You want to meet in the middle ground and say like six or some shit? Uh, yeah, we could do six. We could, we'll we'll say six for that one because the. It, it it's better than I think it's better than all three of the prequels personally because it's got more going on. It's it's got more to keep you interested. You've got familiar characters and new characters, then they're all they're all charismatic. They're not boring like they are in the prequels. The acting is not bad at all. And it doesn't need to be that good if you create a good enough action piece for them to be in. Mm -hmm. And then you've got people like Finn who is underutilized as fuck, but in the first <laughs> movie he's in, he's really good in that first movie. And right. you know, you got great characters like Finn, you got Poe um and then you and ray is pretty good too ray is pretty static compared to the rest of them for me anyway but i think finn and poe are like the highlights of that movie or at least finn is because it starts with finn finn's the reason why everything happens yeah uh so yeah i get I, i'd say like between six and seven out of ten for episode seven yeah all right now we talk about episode eight yeah this, now we talk about more... your baby and my bane okay we'll <laughs> talk about the good things first Luke Skywalker. Yeah, huge fan of his arc in that movie. So many people hate the fact that he's different, but he, he's not, he can't be the same as he was, or else that movie would have been even worse than it already was to people. It would have been boring if he was not different at all. The, the thing I had a problem with is that you look at episode nine, he raises the fucking X-Wing. He could have flown there, flown there the entire time. He knew where they were at, he could have actually gone and fought Kylo. Dude, ep that's not Episode Eight's fault, though. I know, it's not. And it's not even directed by the same dude. I know. The problem with Episodes 7 and 8 that are present in 9 are all 9's fault. It's all because they wouldn't just fucking run with what they had. They kept changing the shit, because they every, every the problem with the sequels is, and Cosmonaut Variety, Variety Hour mentions this. JJ didn't agree with Ryan Johnson. It wasn't even that. It was every movie that was made in that trilogy was a reaction to another one. Episode 7 was a reaction to 3, 8 was a reaction to 7, and 9 was a reaction to 8. They're not a cohesive story, and that's where it fucks up. Now, good when it comes to good things in Episode 8, uh, beginning battle's pretty good. Uh, I like the way it's like, I, I love... I, I think the I, effects of episode 8 are the... It's the best shot film out of all the sequels. Paul irritates the shit out of me. And I know that's what his character was supposed to do in the opening scene, but it's like, why? Why would you do this? And I there I have a re, I, I think I have a thing for why they could have made him better. But um, um, good things, good things. Um, that I think that whole piece is just... It's a really good scene. Um... Especially hold. when Kylo is coming over to like try to kill his mom and he doesn't do it. I like that. But Everyone loves it. The that. only thing I don't like is Leia just no clipping through space. To be fair, she's really old. Just, it's very hard. Just, to, to, like, <laughs> we already knew she was going to be able to use the Force somehow. But it's the fact of you're just going to have her just hit like just cheat codes and shit. Just wee! all the way back well in episode 9 we find out she was technically a trained Jedi so yeah. I think she was about on night level where Je or Luke was about a master I would say more Padawan 
because she didn't complete. between but that's the thing though even that doesn't it's graduated not a, it's not a fair scale to put them on because you look at games like kotor mm-hmm. and i'm gonna keep bringing up kotor because they're quality stories pattern ones and knights in those are ungodly strong but then so like people that can like the, the max level strength of a knight is about on par with like a medium level master and like the later stuff okay so that that's where I'm like, it power one and Jedi Knight can actually be pretty fucking strong. And then she may have even honed her force abilities and not her combat whatsoever. So maybe she does have better abilities than we ever thought she could have. I mean, she, for God's sake, she reached across the galaxy to fucking save her son and then dies. True. She, she pulled out her brother. I what I the way I look at it is you could have made give her a little bit more kind of movement. The problem is they're they're trying to she she was really old in that she was like that was right before she died so she was very she didn't she wasn't able to move they like didn't that know she was gonna die she died of a heart attack on a plane but the thing is she also was like she like I said she's old they, there's only so much you can do with wires and an old lady they had to kind of go with it yeah I kind of forgot about that yeah she, that, well, here's another thing we can look at there's there's a little things there um, Hondo I think that was her name. Holdo, whatever. Holdo. General Holdo. She's just... Cinema Wins brings up a bunch of good points on why she acts the way she does. And at first, I did hate Holdo, but a lot of it does make sense. Like, but but we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get, we got to keep talking about good things first. Um, I liked her character because someone needed to be a reassurance when Leia's down, is what I was going to say. She, I think the, the she was totally justified in everything that she did. She had to. It wasn't a matter of if she wanted to. It was... Yeah, exactly. I think to live. She made a really good decision in what she did, and she was really smart. Now, and the uh, self-sacrifice scene was, oh, but... Oh, and then people get mad about it. And then in episode nine, they fix it because my 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 uh, my other god dead Adam. Let's just hold on episode nine. I know. The the next part is Rose, Tico, and Finn going to that gambling planet. Oh, uh, Candabite sucks. I have no problem with the actor for Rose. That's the thing. Rose isn't bad, but it's that's the not... way she's written. The what should have happened is, and Cosmo and I brought this up, and Finn I should have sacrificed himself. No, not that. Um. That would be stupid. What should have happened is it should have been Finn and Poe that go to that planet. Because when they go to that planet, it's just for Finn to learn that war is bad. But she's telling this to the ex-stormtrooper. Yeah. Who literally quit. Yeah, <laughs> kind of forgot about that. Because war is bad. So it should have been Poe and Finn so Finn can teach Poe that war is bad. Because he needs to learn that lesson. And the bromance gets even more. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's when they, they like God, they missed opportunity. That was but like you also that look. was a perfectly integrated relationship that they could have justified the gay thing. It would have been really nice diversity, but it would have been integrated perfectly, just nice. And you wouldn't have had all these fucking people like, well, they just doing a gay thing, throwing a gay thing. No, they built a relationship from the ground up, and they didn't use it. Ah! The other thing was just representation. It was another addition into the whole thing because we already have a black lead, we have a female lead. Now they want to have an Asian character in, which again. No problem with, but the way it was written was The way shit. they put her in was stupid, and they also just threw her in because they couldn't ha- they couldn't stand the idea of Finn and Poe being together. So they gave him another love interest because fuck everybody, right? Jeez, fucking... He gets three love interests in the whole trilogy. He gets Ray, Ray! he gets Rose, and then he gets the fucking... Possibly Lando's kid. Possibly Lando's kid. At the end of the fucking ninth movie, they're oh, sitting there, and they're like, let's find out together. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, so that definitely... I completely... I only watched that movie once. So, yeah, that, um, and then the fight in episode 8 is really good with Kylo and Rey versus all the people. I think killing Snoke is really good because... Um, and I'm going to say this now because now we're there finally. The killing of Snoke is equivalent to the killing of Palpatine in episode 6. And here's why. Palpatine didn't mean shit in episode 6. It was never about Palpatine. Palpatine was just a random big bad they threw in the movies because without the context of the prequels, which didn't exist at the time, Palpatine was just there to be an evil dude. He was the Emperor, and that was it. Like, they pretty much just ripped it right from Episode Six. He was the big bad that the little bad was, had to kill to prove himself, but they put a twist into it and showed that Kylo was the flawed character and still couldn't give it up. And when people get mad about the throwing away the past, whatever, this is coming from the villain. The one who's wrong. Which is why Ray doesn't throw the past away and wants the white sable. <sighs> Killing Snoke was a good thing because it, it was never about... The whole trilogy was never about Snoke. It was about Kylo Ren and Ray, Mostly Kylo Ren. Yeah. The whole trilogy was just for him to become a good guy and then they fucking killed him. But we'll get to that. 
in what my want, immense anger. What I want to mention really quickly, you mentioned that Palpatine wasn't shit. If you look at the context of it, like it, I'm not disagreeing, but because he was just there for plot. But if you look at what this man did, he took the one of if not most famous villain movie history, and made him his bitch. Yeah, but so did Snoke. I know, but I'm saying is, like, if you look at the scene where he's telling Luke, you're going to fail and shit like that, like, your faith in your friends is your downfall. Like, when he's sitting in the chair and just shit talking. Vader is his dog at this point. Like, he has so much control of this man in the movie. When Before all the context happened, it was, who scares the shit out of the scariest man in the universe? It wasn't even the scariness because he knew Vader knew he could kill him. Uh, I think it was more of just Palpatine. Could... Everything was gone for Vader, so all he had left was Palpatine, and he yeah. knew he already knew by the end of that 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 Palpatine was just using him. But he was all that he had left, and he just went with because he didn't know he had a son. Yeah, stop and a daughter. Him. But anyways, episode nine, or no? Wait, we gotta talk about the bad things about episode seven or, or episode eight. eight. Sorry. Oh okay, yeah, bad things. Can't bite all of can't bite. Just, it, just the entirety. I'm willing to admit it as someone who loves episode eight. Oh. There was one more good thing I missed, and they got rid of it in nine. And it's another reason why I hate episode nine. Ray being a nobody. Yes. It was such a good idea. When she went through her parents in the tunnel, there was nothing. Because the idea of her ha having nobody is like one of the best ideas. It shouldn't. You should never have to be connected to a bloodline just to be an amazing Jedi. Fucking Anakin was a created thing by the Force, and fucking what's his face. Uh, uh, Plagueis. Darth Plagueis, and then and it's Luke is just his kid. Like there, it shouldn't be a bloodline, right? Obi Wan yeah. didn't have a bloodline that mattered, and he became one of the greatest Jedi's of all time. Yeah, it should have been that. It Ray should have been like this nobody who became great. It's fucking Palpatine. Hmm. Episode nine. I hate. I hate episode nine so much. But yeah, but yeah that it, was another, that was the last really good thing I had to bring up because it was such a good idea. But Cantabite. The initial logic of Luke trying to destroy everything at the end of the part where he's like, the, the Jedi must burn! Like, what? You don't have to get rid of all of their wisdom and all of the knowledge. No, I think, so actually I think it makes more sense than we, we, we see it as from face value. Because what he, what the message not supposed to be, or no, not even that, it would, how to explain it. His arc comes to a conclusion right there, or it's starting to come to the conclusion. Because what he's thinking with the Jedi, Jedi is the same thing that Kylo is thinking about everything else. And when Yoda comes back to show him, no, and he does it anyway, he already knows that Ray has the books. Yeah. So, um, it's kind of showing why Luke is the one who progresses more than Kylo, because Luke realizes that he has to be like he has to help in some way, and he does it in. Oh, I forgot to bring up that part too. The best part of that entire movie. He is, opens himself back up to the Force, and he also projects himself, and. From that point on in the rest of the movie, the only person who dies is him. He does the exact thing we talked about, or I had brought up earlier, that Jedi should be able to resolve conflicts with no violence. He was able to save them without killing anybody. Yeah, except himself. Except himself. He was able to, he sacrificed himself for the greater good without causing more violence than there needed to be. That's another thing that's weird, is the, the fact that they went into a planet and they kind of mocked Hoth in a way. Well, yeah. The, the... Well, actually, the reason they did that is because they needed... Uh, it was it was more just... It was supposed to be used as a clue to show us that Luke was not there. Because no, when no, he moves meant... his foot, his salt doesn't move. I'm not talking about that part. I'm talking about... <laughs> a lot of the things that got added into the movie were just fan service. Like, if you look about the whole, oh, yeah, we're on a planet, the rebels are in a trench, and we're going to send walkers after them. It was a callback to Empire Strikes Back. And, yeah, it's nice, but it wasn't necessary. Honestly, I don't mind it, because if you think about it, all of them except for episode 9 are all kind of like homages to the originals. Yeah. Episode 7 is an homage to episode 4, and then episode 8 is sort of an... It, episode an 8 is a true homage to episode 5, because what it does is it takes a lot of plot elements mm -hmm. about running away from the bad guys, and, but also this is all based on the hero's journey, which is already like what Star Wars is, but it takes episode 5 and adds that twist of instead of... Um, when, when the Emperor dies, or actually, sorry, it's based on 6 and 5, but when the Emperor dies, it isn't just, it isn't going to end up in this easy turn and happy ending. It ends up as Kylo not being able to grow, or he grows, but he, he needs one more step to get there, obviously. We get to that point in episode 9. Episode 9. 
Anyway, um... You ready for episode nine? I'm not ready for episode nine ever. Well, we're oh, about to be here in a minute. I know. Um, so yeah, the, um, fuck. So, yeah, the, I think the Hoth thing, I thought it was kind of cool. I mean, I personally enjoyed it. I think it, it's nice that it added a twist yeah. to the end of, like, Luke... Luke was the twist, you know? Like, they took the scene from episode six and put it in eight, and then they added a twist of Kylo. They took the scene from Hoth in the trenches and shit and added a twist with Luke. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we're going to talk eight about... Eight out of ten. Huh? Eight out of ten. You're going to rank it? I personally give it... It's in, it's in the middle for this, because I didn't hate it, but I didn't really love it, if that makes sense. Like, majority of the movies, I don't give them solid ten out of ten. I think 10. it's still way better than... Well, it's better than seven to me. And the pro the, what I love so much about it is it introduces concepts that weren't already in Star Wars. Like the concepts of being a hero, what it what it really entails and all that. Yeah, and the fact that even Luke is critiquing it. Yeah, I'd get, I'd give it a 6 out of 5. 6 out of 6.5. Even he critiques the Jedi. And even even the, the greatest Jedi of all time, don't have me, even the greatest Jedi of all time knows that the Jedi sucked at doing their job. Yeah, but... Now let's talk about definitely the and agreeably the worst Star Wars film to date. I don't know. It's about on par with Clone Wars for me. You mean Rebels? No, the fucking movie Clone War. Attack of Clones. My bad. Oh, uh, no, I honestly, it's I I still like it a little bit more than I like Episode One and Two, only because uh, action. It's I... not boring. I put it lower than Attack of the Clones. Plot-wise, it is the worst plot in every movie there is. If you want to look at it, it is just Star Wars Endgame. Pretty much, yeah. And it's not even that good at doing it. No, it's it's a carbon... The ending is a carbon copy. I mean, I do... Like, okay, let's talk about the good things. Let's attempt to find the good things. The lightsaber's back. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Kylo's helmet actually looked pretty good. Yeah. From a design standpoint. The dyad thing is actually fleshed out. Sidious's robe looks kind of cool, I guess. Mm. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, the Millennium okay. Falcon, Lando coming back to fly, it's a nice little... Okay, Lando coming back in general was a really good idea. It's a nice feeling, but the way they did it was kind of funky. Um... I don't even... I can't even say, like, the deaths, because they weren't even real. I got one for you. The the dream scene inside of the Death Star. Oh, that one's really good, yeah. That one I'm okay that with. That was a really good shot. And then You wanted that lightsaber for a while. I remember I that shit. I still want that lightsaber. You stick. That double action it's a fucking, click out like it's a... It's a fucking snap lightsaber. God, what's his name? Oh, it's 7 o'clock. We got two hours. Pong, yeah, we can we can end it here shortly, but Pong Krell or a Jedi Temple Guard. Do you want a flip out saber like that? Yeah, those are pretty cool. I'd rather have a Jedi Temple Guard Saber. Okay, let, let's just quickly run through nine. Not because we have to leave soon, but just because it's just that easy. It, <laughs> it, it's just it's just all the action thrown you at you. You want to talk about the worst thing about the entire fucking movie? Let's make a knife. Sidious. Uh, no, yeah, definitely. Number one is Sidious. Number two is let's make a knife that just conveniently lines up with the Death Star. Yeah, that's the most Star Wars-y thing I've ever it seen. It is the biggest of MacGuffins in the entire fucking series. Right on top of R two D two and the Death Star plans. <laughs> right, on but, they, top. but they were able to justify the that with Rogue One. But how the fuck could you hide a ship for so long? Even Luke is like, I can't sense any of the dark side, and Ray's like, I found it. The fuck? Well, oh that. Oh well, that's because it was directly connected to her, the dagger, because that was the dagger that stabbed her parents. So like it, it, like at least they tried, but they didn't do that great of a job of it. Force healing. It was a thing in Legends. It was a thing in Legends. And I think I think they can justify it. But it was limited to certain Jedi that could use it. Well, think about it like this. The only things that are healed from it are the Dyad and a snake. And the di the snakes was very minor. So I think they were able to justify it that. Because it was just scratches. It was a couple scratches. They, they just fixed them real quick. Yeah. Just a little band-aid, you know. And then... The, Pour up the, some dirt on it. And then bitch. the only other people that, <laughs> if you notice, the only other people that actually pull off the full on force heal and what it really can do are the dyad of, of Kylo and Ray. So it she kind of. She fucking stabbed him! Yeah, and then she was like, reverse. Oh. Uno reverse. <laughs> she just go, Uno reverse. Like some shit like that. <laughs> fucking. McGuffin. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
No, that that whole. And then the second was... heel is when. It... Oh, yeah. Let's not talk about Kylo just giving him the smooch he's. Been and doing. then I fucking kill him. <laughs> and then I fucking kill the best character in the whole trilogy. Oh God. Uh... No, let's back up. Let's back up to the opening sequence. Sidious is back! Exclamation point. Those three they fucking couldn't, words! They couldn't just put it in the movie that had to subtitle crawl? The most important part of the movie? Are you... You're gonna tell me that she... <laughs> she Wicked Witch of the East, bro! It's a Wicked Witch of the East, bro! Come on! Like the fuck? It's just... It's so fucking dumb! It's literally... Oh, yeah! He's, a, he's alive! Guess what? We don't fucking know. Cloning, I guess, in one fucking offline. Well, the Sith. Thanks, ha- Reddit. <laughs> no, it was literally just. That was a oh, Reddit theory. The Sith have uh, the Sith have these ways we don't know about. You know, like cloning. Like, I mean, we know cloning isn't an off thing. We've seen it in uh, the Force Unleashed, and we've also seen it in the fucking movies with Jango Fett. How the fuck are you gonna try and use what was it called, the Dark Pantheon or whatever, back in Legends when it came out? The Palpatine is making clones of himself and living through them, but they would die. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It was an older book. Oh my god, they do move. Sorry, I got fucking way off topic. But no, just just the whole Palpatine is back with a, little, a one-off. Let, let's just let's just try to conclude this because like there we we could get in we could honestly make a whole episode divulging into every problem with nine. <laughs> nine it, uh, you know what? Fuck it. Nine is the worst movie in the series. See? I, I'm not as bored by it, but the plot is so awful and stupid. We can end it by talking about the last fucking scene where Lando's okay. like, not everybody, and just comes out of nowhere! Now, I will say, I um I will at least defend this Ray Skywalker thing. I will defend it. It's, I don't give two shits about that part of the movie, man. Cause it's so like, many people hate it, but like... It's do like, you really want to carry the name Palpatine after he was a fucking emperor of an oppressive, tyrannical government? Thank you. Someone gets it. It's but at not, the same time, I it's, know, it's, own your shit, bitch! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I, I think it makes sense why they... It makes a lot of sense why they did it. They did it because, first of all, the people that trained her are literally Skywalkers. Yeah. Like, she li- basically... She what, looked at them like they were their... That was the closest parents. family that she had was... Han was a fucked up grandfather. Luke was her weird cracked out uncle. No, no, Han was the drunkle. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was the dratty. He was the dratty. He was a drunk daddy. You want to know why? Because he treated her like he was a daughter. No, he's Droby. Drunk Obi. I hate you. <laughs> but Leia was like a mom to her. Because she's old enough to be at this point. But, yeah, the it's it's a bunch of fucky-wucky for the entire third arc of that movie. Or third half. Yeah, half I don't... So the Skywalker thing... We both could, that's one thing I'm surprised we agree on, is the Skywalk thing it's makes literally, sense. literally, do you want to be tied, well, here's the other thing, that same logic can apply for Luke and Leia. Exactly, yes. Because it's literally, Luke didn't deny his name because he didn't know it, and by the time he was already a hero, when the, everybody found out that they were both when they Yeah, when kids, they found out they were related, he already fucking saved himself and his dad. And the fucking universe. The other thing is, well, she already got rid of Palpatine, so why wouldn't you keep her name? That's the only point I can bring up against it, is if, the same logic you have... If you're gonna talk about one part, you have to critique the entire. But when, but the Skywalker name has a bit more validity behind it when you consider the fact that Anakin was a hero before he did become Vader. True, but to, Palpatine. To, to some extent, the good that he did kind of out was outweighed somewhat by Darth Vader, combined with the fact he did finally turn back and kill the ultimate guy. True, but he Palpatine also committed... was just bad. Palpatine wasn't just bad. He only became bad when he became emperor. But if you look into his history, he was always bad. Oh, he was fucked up, yeah. But politically, the people saw him as a nice senator, and then they elected him. But if they don't have... Since you could say the same thing about Vader, then. If they don't have proof that he's connected to Skywalker... Oh, no. There wasn't any proof. What happened was, Vader... They put around propaganda that Vader killed Anakin. Or that Anakin died fighting and defending in the Jedi Temple. So then, yeah, you could... You could Vader probably, was just his own entity. Then Luke would never have to worry about the name Skywalker because nobody knows no. that Vader and Luke are the same person. But you would know that... Anakin, Emperor Pal- you misspoke there for a second. I'm just... Or, sorry, Anakin and Vader are not the same person to the public. So when you look at, you know, Rey and then Palpatine, people might see them... It gets a little fucky-wucky there because Leia says, they know I'm the daughter of Darth Vader. And she has the name. She had the name Morgana, but then she picked up. She picked up Skywalker, and Luke has Skywalker too. So the public, we're assuming the public is smart enough to realize that Darth Vader was Anakin, and the amount of 
Anakin was only what? 19 when he had a kid? 23, something like that? Uh, 20s. And he was evil. He was literally good for half his life. Like a shaky kind of good for half his life. Then he was evil for the other half. Well, in episode 3, he was like a huge hero. Like, he was the war hero. He was like King Arthur of the Jedi at that point. Pretty much, yeah. When people thought of the Jedi, they would think of him. Because he was he was a really... He was their favorite. And he was in politics all the time. So he was always looked upon by the the senators. Yeah, he's the front man. And the problem with that is... Which is funny that they wouldn't make the front man a Jedi. <laughs> but uh yeah it, it's, it's outrageous it's, it's a weird, unfair it's a weird thing you want to look at it's either do we compare them to the skywalker family or do we compare them to the palpatine family because either way you're coming from both and in this scenario you're hiding your true lineage it's it's a double-edged sword it's yes you have the backing of so many amazing people and one evil fucker kind of evil fucker but then you have a backing of this motherfucker ruled the universe for a, a while well, the problem, with, so the Palpatine one, I think is, I think is much worse than Skywalker's will ever be. True. Because, um, because I don't know, because Palpatine's the only one within that line. It's like before Ray, it's just Palpatine, and then <laughs> technically it's his parents and then Palpatine. <laughs> we don't talk about the parents because they they weren't really. They don't have names. Think, didn't he kill his parents? Uh, Palpatine murked them. I'm talking about. Sorry, I meant Ray's parents. I misspoke. Yeah, so fucking nobody knows Ray's parents, right? Kind of. And the only people that the only people that the only Palpatine that people know is Palpatine. Is is you know the Palpatine. Oh, fucking Chief. I don't remember his first name. Yeah, Chief. Chief. Chief is the only one that everyone knows, and he was the most evil of them all, and he ruled the universe for like racist so it's, ass it's, universe it's for the logical. longest time. It's logical. It's logical. And then the Skywalkers, even if you want to look at Vader, you could also look at before that. Yeah. He, and he redeemed himself, unlike Palpatine. Ray, or not Ray. Palpatine just straight up got fucking murked twice. Yeah, she, she just got fucking blown up and, twice. <laughs> well, here's the other thing. If you're going to look at the if you're gonna look at the Skywalkers, and you have to include Kylo Ren because he's technically related to the bloodline. Which he also was redeemed when he saved Ray. No one knows that. But she Rey. could tell people. For True. the same reason we don't know that... We didn't know that Vader... Or they didn't know that Vader was a Skywalker until Leia said something. Yeah. Ray could still share the story of what Kylo did to people and let them know. Yeah, it's literally just... Oh, yeah, he was one... Rude motherfucker killed all the young, not youngies. He killed like him and the Knights of Ren killed. The, Slaughtered a lot we of know, civilizations. We know for a fact they fucking did. But, but if it wasn't for Kylo Ren, there would be no Ray right now. So true. So I think we can end it on that point about everything. And yes, yeah, so final rank one out of ten. Two. No, you know I'll give it no, two out of ten. I ain't giving it shit. You know what I'm giving it? Nothing. <laughs> all right. Well, that concludes that. So, going back over everything, um, now we have to conclude. Which trilogy is better? Prequels. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. On my hand... No, I'm kidding. I don't actually... Let me think about this. I actually don't have I'm sorry, a favorite sorry, of the two. By the way. Oh, for God's sake. I don't have a favorite of the two, to be honest. They're both on evil, evil, even playing ground. Aside from even though Rise of Skywalker is like... The problem... So, the my problem is I would love to say the sequels... I, I really want to, but... I'm going to say even. The problem with the sequels is they're not cohesive like the prequels, and also the fact... Um, sorry, I'm just on my your phone to make sure... Okay, still going. The problem with the prequels is they, they, they all kind of suckish a lot yeah. in a lot of ways, but then you've got the sequels where they don't suck as much, but they're not cohesive together. It's a double And then you've got, like, all of them are equally bad-ish, yeah. and then you've got the last one that's pretty good. And then you've got, like, two really decent movies, I would say, and in the sequels, and a very shit one. So, that's what I'm saying. Equal. Equally terrible, equally good. I think... Because, again, it's not our Star Wars. I mean, they're all our Star Wars. I grew up, I grew up with every single one. I watched them all as kids. I watched all six of them as kids. And then I watched them all as they came out now. I'm not just saying, like, from our point of view. Like, it's literally just yeah. depending on your age. From my point of view, the Jedi are evil. Um, For God's <laughs> sake, then you are lost! No. Hey, the Jedi were evil, okay? I'm just saying. No, um, but, yeah, no, I'm if, just saying. So, based on my unbiased opinion, uh, well, it's not that unbiased. I, you know, honestly, <laughs> I think every point that I brought up is fair. I don't think I've said anything that was very outrageous. No, no, no. And, I, and I've def- every, every point that I've defended, I have given, like, some sort of concrete to. Like, the Ray thing, like I said, I brought up the fact that Luke is just, like, way more They're Mary. both Mary Sues, it's okay. Honestly, Ray's a little bit less of a Mary Sue, I would... Because, like... It depends on where you're reading and what you include as canon. Because, again, we already talked about both of them have been 
explained out and other theories and all that, but that's Ray okay. has the. But they've also in the movies they have the same amount of training as yeah, each other. That's what I'm saying. Because like between both, the between the time out, of out. episode four to six, um, she has the same amount of training between seven to nine. Yeah. And she hers is also sped up a little bit. Like I said, exposed to the force at a very early time in like her training. Yeah, it's just I'm saying. Plus the benefit of the combat experience already being there. Like, she's got a lot already going on to give her a bit of a head up to get to where Luke is. Yeah. I still think Luke as a Jedi Knight is stronger than Rey is as a knight, Definitely. for sure. But also, she I think he's wiser than she is. I think combat-wise, they're about equal playing field in 6 and 9. If you honestly look at it, his da- he doesn't have the advantage of a true saber person to teach him. Yeah. So just like, But Rey's is also, like, she has practical experience there. So it's like this weird spot, but anyway, you look at the force abilities of Luke, and then yeah, yeah. So um, I would say, I think <laughs> without context of everything else, I think the sequels are better. But with context and the shows that we have now, I yeah. think the prequels would be considered better. But I'm going to look at it from a non-contextual standpoint and say that pre- sequels are better because we don't have a lot of context for the sequels yet. Yeah. But once we do get there and we do have all those books to help us get through that and all of the shows or whatever we might even get with those to go with it, yeah. we'll be able to make a fair assumption. But without context on both sides, I think sequels are just a little bit better. What I'm going to say is, again, without context, it's the same thing. I personally am not a fan of sequels, but that does not convey what I'm going to say, or that does not change my, not jurisdiction, my verdict on it. When you're looking at it from a whole, like, oh yeah, it's Star Wars. It has their own story points, they all have their own flaws, it has, they have their own good things. They got huge flaws, cons. they got big ups, you know. Yeah, they have pros and cons and everything. And, and out of personal enjoyment, I, 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 I have more enjoyed watching the sequels than I do the prequels. For the prequels nostalgia are really bad. purposes, prequels. As a critique point of view, fucking flat. I'm dead center on this one because, again... For my childhood, prequels. For the newer generation's childhood, sequels. It's whatever they like. And the sequels are not bad movies. They're... One of them is. <laughs> One is yeah, good. They're... But that, and then you look at the prequels. Two of those movies are pretty bad. So. Really quickly before we end, Star Wars fans are fucking terrible. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you're a Star Wars fan, un- unless you're like us and have like a, a general, <laughs> we have emotional playing ground. No, but we have a moderate mindset, I believe, compared to a lot of you other don't people. Don't hate the fucking actors. Like not you. Not, I'm not like saying. No, I know you. what you mean. Yeah, don't hate on the actors for shit. Like it's not fucking. It's not Daisy Ridley's fault. Ray turned out the way she did. It's not. It's definitely not John Boyega's poor fault that Finn turned out the Rose shit. Rose Tico as a character might be bad, but you do not. Hound the actor. And get her kicked out of Star Wars, but make her show up for it anyway. That was, I felt so bad for her. I did too. She's but... not a bad actor. She's fine. She got a new lead. She's the lead actress on a new Dragon movie for Disney. Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> or if you want to sponsor us, you can do No, sponsor. they're not going to sponsor our asses. But it'd be nice. It'd be nice. But yeah, I think we're going to end it there. Make sure to like and subscribe today. Make sure to click the bell icon to see notifications whenever we upload. Um... What the fuck did we call this? Star nerds? Star nerds. A subsidized page of Cup of Eggnog. Alright, we're gonna end it there. Uh, we'll make this uh, episode one... With an eye. Uh, <laughs> the Phantom Opinion. The Phantom Opinion? Bet. Alright, cool. Alright. Bye! Bye.